It used to be that good smartphones are getting cheap and cheap smartphones are getting good. However, with phones like the OnePlus 5T from what used to be a budget price coming in at a flagship price, this may no longer be the case. A new saying might be flagship smartphones are getting stale and unknown smartphones are becoming flagships. Let me explain. This is my review of the Elephone U Pro, an unknown smartphone that could easily be a flagship device. Well, at least it comes very close. We're going to be focusing on five key points with the U Pro. The design, the screen, the software, the camera, and just some other features. So to start, we have the design. And no, this is not a Galaxy S9, but you'd be forgiven for thinking that it was. One design aspect from the S9 or the Galaxy line of devices that I'm not a huge fan of is the fact that it is glass on glass. The mirror finish on the back is one of the most fingerprint prone phones that I've ever used. Now does it look nice? Well, yeah, it looks great. You have a curved design on the front and back that has a seamless finish to it, which feels great in the hand. It can sometimes be a bit slippery, but what smartphone isn't these days? You do have some subtle Elephone branding on the back, and no, the logo on the back of the device doesn't light up when you're having it on charge. You have your dual camera set up in the top middle of the device with the flash, and then just below that you have the fingerprint sensor. Now you may want to be a little bit careful with the fingerprint, being so close to the camera sensor, you don't want to be getting a ton of fingerprints on the actual camera itself. On the right of the device you have all of your buttons which are very tactile if a little close together. And finally you have your USB Type-C charge on the bottom along with your single speaker. The included charge will allow for fast charging and the speaker is loud if lacking a little bit in bass, so here's a little example. But around the front of the device is where the real show is. You have a 6 inch 18 to 9 AMOLED display with a resolution of 1080 by 2160. Now I know a lot of you are saying that it should be Quad HD, but for me that's not really a problem. In fact, this along with the OnePlus 5T have some of the best 1080p Plus displays that I've seen. Now there is a slight colour shift when viewing the device off centre, but that's normal behaviour for AMOLED displays, and at least it's not as bad as something like the Pixel XL2 screen. But overall this is a great screen for displaying all of your favourite apps, games and also full screen video on YouTube to take advantage of that 18 to 9 aspect ratio. Now moving on to the software and actually what powers the U Pro. And surprisingly, the version of Android that we have here beats out some flagships from the likes of LG and Samsung even in 2018. We have Android Oreo 8.0 with the February 2018 security update. There are some strange design aspects that I don't get, like not allowing icon support in the stock launcher and masking some key apps from Google like the calculator, calendar and you also have two messaging apps. Also from time to time my Chrome icon will be the standard Google Chrome icon or it completely changes to look a lot more like Safari on iOS. But other than that I love the swipe up to the blurred out app drawer and you also have quick access to Google Now and the Google Assistant which are very nice touches. Everything else from the notification shade and settings are pretty much stock Android and I don't hate the non-stock lock screen with the off center time and the notifications right at the top of the display. You've also got a lot of power behind the U Pro. You've got the Snapdragon 660 processor, Adreno 512 GPU and in the model that I have here which is the top spec model you've got 6 gigabytes of RAM and 128 gigabytes of storage. So that's plenty of power for most people and in terms of benchmarks it does really well. Okay, but now onto what most people want to know about, the camera. You have a dual camera setup with two 13 megapixel sensors with a 2.0 aperture, dual tone flash, 1080p video with stabilization at 30 frames a second, 60, 90 and 120 frames a second for some great slow-mo options, and lastly some 4K video at 30 frames a second. But none of that matters if the image processing and software lets it down. And for me, the camera is the point that makes me not want to use this device as my daily driver. But that doesn't necessarily mean that pictures are bad, so what I'm going to do now is show you some examples of exactly what the photos are going to look like straight out of the U Pro. Now most of these were taken in auto mode, some were taken in HDR, so again, let me know in the comments what you guys think of any of the photos that you're going to see now to see if it's up to scratch with some of the newer devices or some of the flagships of this year.
So again, let me know what you think of those photos below. Now, the thing that makes this phone basically unusable for me is the video side of things. The frame rate is very inconsistent while recording the video, and to my surprise, that actually translates over to the video itself. As you can see from this brief example here, I've screen recorded the display of the U-Pro. To give you an example, when I press the shutter button to take a video, you can see that it gets very choppy for pretty much no reason. And then what we have here is the final video file which I've imported onto my iMac. And again, you can see that that choppiness translates over to the final video itself, so you can't really get consistent results. Now the frame rate issues does definitely depend on whether you're doing it in 1080p or in 4K, but again you don't really want to guess it if it isn't or is going to take the video itself. You want to be confident that what you're going to be shooting is going to come out really crystal clear and the 4K video itself is definitely decent, however without any stabilization at 4K again it doesn't make it a very good experience. And with low light both photos and also videos are pretty much non-existent which again kind of makes it a no-go if you don't have that perfect lighting. Now this is a little bit disappointing considering that the rest of the U Pro is so darn good. But enough of the negative, back to what's good. You have face unlock which is under a second which works really well and some people have said that they can fool it with a photo but for me that's not really been an issue so maybe there's been some sort of software update in the background as I haven't had that problem at all. The fingerprint reader is fast and reliable so you do have multiple ways to get into the device and the battery life is great with a 3550 mAh battery which easily gets me over 5 hours of screen on time. The fast charging means that even if you do have low power, then you can get back up to full really quickly. Now it's a little bit of a shame that with the glass back you don't have any sort of wireless charging. I have seen some reports online that it does have wireless charging, but for me I've tried it out with around 3 or 4 wireless charging pads and I've had no luck whatsoever. I also can't see anything about it on the official Elephone U Pro website or on the Gearbest website where I actually got this device from. And even though the model that I have here is 128GB in regards to storage, you do also get microSD card support for up to 2TB. So to round this review up, can I recommend the Elephone U Pro to someone out there that's looking for a new device? Well, if you want a phone with great build quality, an amazing screen, great software that's going to keep up with most things that you throw at it, and a camera that's okay but not the best, then 100% I can recommend picking up the U Pro. It's got all that I mentioned in this review for around 3 to 400 less than you would get on a flagship device from one of the bigger guys. If however you want all of that and a great camera that is going to be top spec, then unfortunately I can't necessarily recommend this device. And sadly that's the category that I fall into. I love everything about this phone, but I do take a ton of photos and videos on a daily basis, meaning that I can't really use this as my daily driver and I'm going to have to go back to my Google Pixel XL for the meantime, at least until the Pixel 3 comes out. Hopefully the next device from Elephone improves on the camera while keeping everything else pretty much unchanged. And from what I've seen from some leaks and some examples of what the next device is going to be, it looks pretty much on track to do that. And just a quick disclaimer guys, the U Pro was sent out to me from Gearbest who offer some great Chinese smartphones and accessories with some great prices and also very quick shipping even to faraway places like where I am here in the UK. Check the link in the description for all about the U Pro and maybe even get one for yourself. If you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up down below. If you've got any questions or comments, I'm going to do my best to answer everything about the U Pro, so let me know in the comments section down below or on Twitter at Copper vs Glass. For more content moving forward, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, and once you've done that, turn on notifications so that you're notified anytime that I post a new video here on the channel. I'm Michael from Copper vs Glass. Thanks very much for watching, and I will catch you guys in the next video.